free time. Uh-oh. We got some business owners in the room. We got some ind independent professionals in the room. Uh, can we talk about a 24-hour, uh, seven-day-a-week uh, job, a slave to the business, very little family time, your business consumes your mind 24-7, major stress, no real freedom, and you feel like you have a job instead of owning a business, and your day is consumed putting out brush fires. How many of you feel that way? How many of you feel that way even after you've been involved in a lot of programs? Yeah, you know, that's something that we continue to face every single day. And so I always want to go ahead and uh, remind us why we're doing what we're doing. Because all of us have a story. Now, my story, of course, is uh, how I started my, my business out of the trunk of my car some years ago. And uh, I'm originally from L.A., uh, lower Alabama. Now, my wife doesn't laugh at my jokes either, so don't worry. <laughs> and uh, as uh, Zig says, if you lay an egg, you might as well just uh, stand there and take a look at it. Uh, actually, the fact is, is that a lot of folks in the room have been following me for a long time, and they already know all of this, but for the benefit of our video audience, and uh, for the benefit of those of you that may be just uh, joining us, as a matter of fact, how many of you, this is your first live presentation that you've uh, seen me speak live for the first time? Let me see your hands, please. Wow, look at that, all right? So maybe you've seen uh, DVDs and audio and things like that. Well, what happened uh, to me is uh, I grew up in uh, Mobile, Alabama uh, on welfare. There were seven kids crammed in this little 700, uh, 600 square foot shack. And the roof on that house was so bad that every time it rained, and it rained hard in Mobile, Alabama, just like it does here, we had to get out all the pots and pans to catch the leaks. And uh, there was a time in my life where we literally survived somehow on $100 a month. Now listen, that was back in the 60s, and that was a long time ago, but I don't care if it was the 20s, $100 a month, that's just not a lot of money for seven hungry kids. And by the way, my mother was... Uh, basically single a lot of those a lot of those years and I had uh, three different dads and and um, so I, I grew up very poor uh, grew up with without a lot and uh, of course today uh, just I'm, I'm so blessed today and and the thing is is that I, I like to tell this story because uh, you can't be worse off than I was but there's a God in heaven and the thing is, is that there's a break for you. And the break for me was, uh, when I was 18 years old, I had hair down to here and I got kicked out of the house. And that was the best thing that ever happened to me. I had a fight with my stepdad, kicked me out of the house, said, don't ever come back. I had zero money. And my buddy and I bummed up $39.95 for a bus ticket from Mobile, Alabama to Houston, Texas. Remember that term from the 60s, Neil? Bummed up, hitchhiking, all that kind of stuff, right? And uh, so uh, we went and had pizza because it's going to be a long bus ride. And so I'd have something in the belly. And we also knew that there was one thing that was different about Houston than Mobile, Alabama. Back then, the pay phones only cost a dime. And in Houston, they were 25 cents. So I made sure I had that one quarter that I needed. So when I arrived here in 1978, I had exactly 25 cents in my pocket. But there were people in my life, just like there are people in your life today, that make all the difference. And those people was first my sister, who I was real close to, was living here with my dad, who I'd only met twice in my entire life. My real dad left when I was a year old, came to live with him. I called him up and said, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to be in Houston tomorrow. Said, really? You visiting? I mean, you know, no, uh, I'm kind of coming there to live. You know, and he was like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, but he was there. He picked me up changed my life because he was very successful. My stepmother, who's still alive today, uh, at, they have a very successful design firm, and I began to learn about the finer things of life and all of this. And I became a waiter. I waited tables, and uh, back in uh, 1984, 
uh, I met my wife, Denise Conjet Antoinette Panella. Now that's Italian, folks. And uh, went to uh, New Jersey to get married to my wife. And when you marry into an Italian family, uh, you don't get dishes and register at the department store, right? What do you get? This guy's smiling on the front row. What do you get? You get money, right? So even at that time, as a waiter, I made about $500 a week. We still had no money. So uh, getting married, we got $3,000 cash for our wedding money. And when I was up there getting married, there was a friend of the family, a friend of my wife's family, who was my age. I was 23 at the time. And he was tooling around a little red Mercedes convertible. And that got my attention. I said, I want to know what that guy does, and I want to know if it's legal. <laughs> you know, Italians. My, no, that's not my wife's family. In fact, uh, my wife's parents, uh, they're almost uh, 80, uh, wonderful people. He, uh, her dad worked all of his life at Warner Lambert, retired from there. Just the most beautiful people you'd ever, you know, want to know. In fact, my wife will be here a little later today. I'll make sure to introduce you. Um, we got a whole wave of people that are coming that couldn't care anything less about me, but they're here for Bob Berg. So uh, anyway, so uh, Bob will be up about 10 o'clock. But um, so I get married and it and, uh, turns out that this guy who's tooling around the little red Mercedes convertible is in the carpet cleaning business. And I thought, well, I can do that. Who can't clean carpet? That can't be that hard, right? And uh, so I got myself a machine and started cleaning carpet out of the trunk of my car. My first job was $25. I did it for a, a fellow waiter. Took us all day and he did most of the work, right? And so I struggled for 13 long years, just like most entrepreneurs do. I think all probably do, making every mistake that there is to make. But I was able to get that business up to doing about $30,000 a month. I had three trucks and a handful of employees, and I was making good money. I still have my income statements. I was making about $100,000 a year. Not bad. But my life was so messed up. I had a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week job. Nothing could happen in that business until, unless I was involved in it. So I was basically a slave to my business. And my life changed forever when I learned about Michael Gerber and the E-Myth. How many of you have read the E-Myth? Yes. Deserves a hand clap. Changed my life. Changed many of your uh, perspective on your small business. Don't spend another day in business without having, the, having read the E-Myth by uh, Michael E. Gerber. Well, because of the, the information of that book, I went to my favorite place in the whole world, Destin, Florida, spent a week down there on the beach just thinking about my life, rewriting my life. And in uh, Michael Gerber's book, he talks about your primary aim. What's your primary aim? And what I knew is somehow, I didn't know what it would look like, but I knew that this is what I wanted to do, something like this. And so I started building what he calls that turnkey system. I brought in partners and we hired employees and things like that, built the ultimate carpet cleaning company right here in Houston up to uh, $2.8 million a year. We charge an average of 62 cents a square foot today. 14 trucks. We don't have a big you know, commercial accounts. This is mostly residential. We don't drive new business with a yellow page ad. Very little direct advertising. We generate an average of $50,000 a month with our referral program uh, just through automatic referrals through that system. And 27 employees that absolutely love their job. It's a turnkey business. I haven't been to my office in over a week getting ready to the, for this round.